Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be about the mindset and the different synergies that come to mind when it comes to cleaning out artifacts or what you should be selling and what you should not be selling, all that type of stuff. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so first of all, this is going to be my second time recording this, and hopefully it, uh, it turns out all right this time. I spent a bunch of time preparing and recording this video already, and then when I went to edit it, I found out my head was over there, and the footage was completely worthless because my head and body were blocking the stats of items that I was talking about, and the viewer couldn't see anything. <laughs> So I got wrecked and uh, here we are to give it another shot and hopefully it, uh, it, it turns out all right this time with my uh, with, with, with me moving everything over there to be on the other side. But yeah, okay, so first of all, I want to talk about the mindset of cleansing gear. I've done this um, for hundreds of different accounts and, and one of the first things that I want to look at when I go into a gear cleanse is look at the account level. And then you can also look at the account power and their fastest champion. That's three things that can give you an idea of the threshold that you need to be using when it comes to what gear you should either sell or keep. If somebody's level 95, they've done a lot of grinding, they're probably very end game. If somebody's level 45, then obviously the threshold of what's gonna be good and what's gonna be usable for champions while they're developing their account is gonna be vastly different and you need to know that gap. Also, someone's player power, if it's 1 million versus 10 million, that's important to know. And then I'll also take a look at someone's fastest champion. That can be a really good barometer uh, of like what someone's gear is because you don't know if someone buys gear packs or if they're a whale or if they're uh, free to play. So looking at someone's fastest champion can tell you Okay, they've got a 362 speed Lysandra. Their gear is going to be pretty good. If their fastest champions or if their fastest champion speed is 250, you know they're they're, they're kind of towards the earlier game and and they're still in the development phase of their account. So really important to know those three things in terms of the account level, the account power, and then what their fastest champion. That's going to be the three things I look at when I dive into a gear cleanse for somebody. And then I want to talk about the, the mindset a little bit because there's a lot of times that I do these live on stream and I can see in the chat viewers are getting getting antsy like, oh my gosh, this is making me sick watching him sell these items. Uh, and, and that's because sometimes they don't, uh, they don't realize that in the end game, you have to sell items that are good. There's no way around it. You can't keep... 10,000 items on your account. You, you've got to cut items that seem like they're pretty good. Uh, and, and the thing is, is you're going to be stronger when you replace them. So if you've got 1,000 items and you cut your artifacts down to six or 700, when you grind up and replace those slots with usable items, your, your account is going to be better than it was before. It's kind of like when you're lifting weights, it, it, it seems like it's bad because your muscles hurt but they repair stronger than they were. So it's the same thing when it comes to cleansing artifacts. It seems like it hurts your account because you're selling so much, but it grows back stronger when you, when you farm more items and your threshold of what you're gonna keep keeps improving. So really it's only gonna hurt if you accidentally sell something that, that like quad rolls speed or a banner that triple rolls speed or something. So uh, if you're selling something that's borderline or something that's decent or good, it's not gonna hurt your account in a week. You won't even remember that you did it. So I'm on my account here, and the first thing that I do when I do an artifact cleanse is I'll go in and go to just new, and I'll make sure and clean everything out that they've farmed, and then we'll get to the ones that are on their account. So uh, for my account is is pretty end game. You saw I was level 92, and so what I would do in that case is anything five star rare gone. Uh, we're not going to keep it regardless of the stats. I know I get it. There's five star rare speed boots that at level 12 can hit crit rate and at level 16 can hit accuracy or whatever. I get it, they can be good items, but you, you can't get into keeping like decent five-star rares with, with potential when you're end game, or you're just always gonna be full and managing your account is gonna be super annoying. So uh, we're gonna start there, five-star rares. I don't even look at it, I'm just going. Uh, then I'll actually, I'll at least look at the epics, but, uh, but usually 99% of the time, even if it's a five-star, I'm gonna be selling it. If it's a legendary with speed, that's one where if it's a if it's a good item with good stats, I'll at least give it a roll because uh, you never know. You're like about I think one or two percent to get a quad roll on speed. Someone correct me if you're a mathematician. That's it seems right. It's about one or two percent to to roll quad speed on a legendary. So uh, very hard to do, and it's worth kind of giving it a shot when you can. Uh, and then also if it's a crap set, 
I only keep it if it's I only I only look at it if it's six star. Fury is, is a pretty unused set, so you can see here all of these are five stars except for one item. I would only look at one item, so I would just go through five star. Oh, here's a six star, but uh, and then this was the only one that was a six star, and it's obviously gone. It's a flat stat bottom piece. So uh, frenzy is kind of the same way. I'm only even gonna look at it if it's six star, uh, and if it's a rare, I'm not gonna look at it either. It's got to be at least a six star epic or six star legendary for me to even look at it uh because it, if it's a six star rare uh, of a non like meta set i'm not going to keep it so all these are gone same thing immunity you also want to keep in mind what the set is for so immunity is probably going to be going on arena champions so you're going to want things that synergize with that and and certain arena type builds that you're doing in your roster so you just got to keep that in eye when you're cleansing things and kind of looking at it now when you get to the when you get to where i'm at in, in the end game it can be pretty tough to get items that that hit all the checkpoints to keep otherwise you're just always going to be full but okay so this right here is a six star speed uh immunity piece and it has resistance so i would keep that that one is worth rolling up to 12 and kind of seeing what we hit so that's a keeper right there uh and then also shield set is a good example of a piece where you really want the stats to synergize so uh you're gonna want pieces that have hp because obviously if someone is being in a shield set they are going to be stacking hp probably because they provide ally shield based on hp it's going to go on someone like a mountain king or a harvest jack where you want to get their hp up and synergize both their damage and the shield they provide for the team so uh, if you've got a shield piece that doesn't have hp it makes it a lot worse so something to think about oh see but like this is an exception like this is just a generally really good piece speed crit rate crit damage six star epic like i'll keep that i know it doesn't have hp i know it's not ideal but it's a piece that's worth having on your account just to kind of see it could it could go triple speed double speed crit rate it, it, it could be a fun piece to have so that's one where it's kind of an exception and i would keep it um but no and then we're gonna go through and be pretty see this is a six star hp that could go like double speed and hit hp at 12 so that one does have a little bit of potential i'll at least keep that um and you can see uh, like how it would have been a big deal if my head was over there on the other side. Everything I'm talking about, I made myself a little bit smaller too. Uh, you could see how if I was talking while my head is blocking everything, the video would be kind of weird and unusable. So I got absolutely GG'd. Uh, same thing here. Not ideal, but it's a six star. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll at least keep that and roll it to see what happens. And some of these stun set, we're going to want uh, speed. So for sure, and, and most items you're gonna want speed somewhere on it. If it's boots, you're gonna want it on the main stat, 90 something percent of the time, you're gonna wanna use speed boots. Uh, and then for other pieces, 99% of the time, you're gonna want speed as a sub stat. So only keep something that doesn't have speed on it at all, if it's absolutely godly. It's gotta be perfect if it doesn't have speed. Um, and then here we go. Uh, Kiering is a really unused set. So anything like that is just gonna be auto sell. And then we're into the cruel pieces now um see like both of these are decent and cruel is a pretty good filler set it's a two-piece set it can be good for faction wars and 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 building like uh doom tower secret room type teams so you do want uh, a, a good backbone of like speed cruel immortal some of these like generally useful sets that can flesh out uh faction wars and doom tower teams so like I i'll keep decent pieces like this even though they're not great uh, and this is a legendary unfortunate on the 444 rolls but uh see legendaries can roll quad speed so this is kind of how i would cleanse what was left here on my account and we'll sell those and then what i like to do is roll things up to level 12 when i've gotten to this point right here because if this helm hits like flat attack or something gone i'm gonna sell it so what i'll do is i'll fire up the uh the rivet tuner that i've got a video on and we'll make this go super fast so if you're curious about that i'll try to remember to pop that up there uh so you can check out how to make your artifacts upgrade this fast but this is what i would do next is upgrade this to level 12. see right now we got double speed or uh, i spoke too soon ripped myself uh but so uh if it rolls like hp percent at level 12 or something then this might be keepable it's attack percent with resistance and it only hit speed once it didn't go double speed or something so i would i would honestly probably sell this like like it's decent it's a decent piece for a mid game account they would definitely keep this but i've got to cut that loose i just have too many pieces of gear always on my account and especially the rares i want to roll up to level 12 really quick just to see what they hit and then let's fire up 
The uh, I forget how slow it is when artifacts upgrade that normal speed. That's just brutal. They've got to address that. I can't believe the game is uh, on its two-year anniversary right now, and they have not addressed. The, uh, we shouldn't have to go to like third-party software or emulators to uh, to do this on artifact upgrading. They should have a little slider here. Uh, like you have all this dead space. They should have a little a little slider where you can change how fast things upgrade. Okay, this is a good talking point. Um, okay, you got to be careful about items that have both accuracy and resistance because typically, not always, I understand there's exceptions, but the vast majority of the time, you're not going to be stacking resistance and accuracy on a champion. You're going to want to focus on one or the other. Like a Duchess, for example, you're building a Duchess, you want to get her up to five, 600 something resistance, and she doesn't want any accuracy. So, Or you're building like a Madame Saris, you want to get her up to five, 600 accuracy, and you can't really squeeze in resistance while getting her tough enough to survive and getting the other stats that you need. So uh, you got to be a little bit picky on pieces that have accuracy and resistance on them. But these are six-star immunity boots, which I do not have a lot of on my account. It's a it's a role that I'm lacking, so I'm going to lean towards keeping that right now. But I did want to talk about the uh, the relationship between accuracy and resistance when it comes to some of these artifacts. And then I want to see uh, like a legendary, if it's going to hit quad speed or something. So we would fire that up. There we go. And that hit a five. It went from four to nine. So we're looking on a, on a five-star item, we're looking for that five roll on the speed. HP percent, that's good on an immortal. See, this, so this one was good that I rolled it because this is a pretty good fibber piece. This is a great piece for like those Doom Tower secret rooms and stuff uh, to have a good backbone of some of these pieces. Like a mortal that has speed and HP, it's a good piece to have on your account for filling out your uh, your artifacts. Not giving me speed or HP. Great. Yep, that piece worked out well. I'm glad I kept it. That'll be a great filler piece to have on my account. So that's some of the type of stuff that I'm looking for when it comes to what I'm going to sell and what I'm going to keep. And then uh, I, may, I, I might not do it because my account, it's already kind of been done on. But what I'm going to do when I go into an artifact cleanse, I'll show you kind of the things I'm looking for and the system that I go through and the different checkpoints I'm using when I'm going to sort uh, what to sell and what to kind of go through. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go to boots and I'm going to filter by all boots that are not speed. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through and on, on an account like mine, that's like level 90 plus, an account that's endgame, I'm going to go through and anything that is five star, I'm going to sell. Because an endgame account does not want five star stat boots. You're only going to keep stat boots that aren't speed if they're really good. Like six star and they have speed as a sub stat and they've got usable things like no flat stats, no flat attack. They've got things like crit rate, accuracy, resistance, HP percent. You're not going to, you're not going to, you're going to need to be very picky on stat boots that are not speed as the main stat. The next thing I'll do is back out and clean the filter, pop in again, and then I'll sort by chess pieces that are accuracy, resistance, and then flat stat to see if any of those slid through the cracks. Now I will only keep accuracy and resistance chests that are a good set, a, a relevant set like speed, resistance, something like that. And then also if they have speed as a sub stat. So, uh, and, and also has to be six star. I won't keep, it's, it's, it's accuracy and resistance chests are kind of similar to non-speed main stat boots. Like they can be good. It's handy to have some of them on your account, but they better be perfect. They better be six star. They better have speed as a sub stat and they better have all relevant stats. So that's the next thing I would check when I'm going through on what to sell and make sure it hasn't slipped through the cracks. Then I would back out, clean my filter again, go in here, go to gloves. And I would do the same thing. I would go crit damage. And then flat stat to see if any slid through the cracks. And here you can see a couple slid through the cracks. They, they, they stand out to me right away because they're five-star gear. And I know those don't belong on an endgame account. So I would sell that right away. Uh, but okay, so this is a good talking point is crit damage gloves. A lot of times people will keep crit damage gloves that don't have crit rate and speed both. Like this is one where... <laughs> It, it, it's a it, it's one that you would lean towards keeping because it's part of like the crit rate and crit damage set bonus um but let me find a good example here uh like accuracy yeah this is one that i would definitely sell uh this probably slipped through the cracks so if you've got crit damage gloves you're gonna want crit rate and speed on them because if you're using crit damage gloves it's going to be on somebody that's a damage dealer and you're going to want 100 crit rate it's going to be hard to get to that 100 crit rate threshold if you're using crit damage gloves because you're missing 50 or 60 crit rate that you would get from your gloves. So you've got to get crit rate as a substat on those gloves. I'll see people all the time keeping crit damage gloves that don't have crit rate. So that's the first thing I want to look for. And then ideally 
also would have speed as well. So these would be a sell. I would, I would, I would cut something like this because it does have crit rate, but it's got a flat stat, no speed, and it's a five star. So that would be gone. Then I would back out, clear my filter, come back in, and I would sort by uh, everything here. So you don't really have to do anything. And then I would go to substats and see what has two substats. And these would be things that really need to go, unless they are some wild exception. But something like this, uh, a five-star artifact with two flat stats, that's got to go on an endgame account. So I would go through and see which ones kind of slipped through the cracks and, and would cut them. You can see on my account, a couple slipped through. Now, these I took to 16, and of course, they hit two flat stats and that's how it that's how, that's how that ended up slipping through the cracks and being on my account was it's six star speed of a, of a usable set crit damage so i was like oh okay i'll let me upgrade these and i probably upgraded these a few months ago and then i got the double defense and uh and then it hit two flats so that's how that ended up happening but i would go through and check these different parameters i would start with hp and attack switch it to hp and defense and see, like, this is a four star. This Oh, this was on my uh, Aethel that I rebuilt for a secret room. So this piece is, is is one of the remnants of back when I was a beginner player. This was probably one of the first five items I took to level 16. Uh, this was on my my Aethel that I just rebuilt for that for that all rare attack uh, Doom Tower secret room. So that's one that now is going to have to go. But kind of a, a, a fun little blast of the past there. Uh, one that slipped through because of rebuilding Aethel. And then I would have to sort by attack and defense to see which doubles slipped through. You can see here this has speed, which is probably why I kept it to see if it would go quad speed. But it's a five star, so I'm just going to sell it. It's not worth the 1% the chance or whatever that that would hit. So, okay, good job there. We don't have a bunch of ones that slipped through. And the ones that did, I went ahead and got rid of. So then uh, flat attack is the worst So I would go through and uncheck and then go through the ones that have flat attack. And these you're gonna to need to be very picky on. Now see, this is a five star and it hit flat attack twice. So my account's a little bit more end game now than it was back when I used this. So that's a basic set with two uh, flat stat attacks. I would definitely get rid of that. These are six star, I would keep that. Uh, like there's gonna be some use for that in, in like a secret room or something. It's a speed set, so I would keep that. Uh, five star accuracy piece with flat. These slipped through and those need to be gone. And uh, yeah, that, that slipped through and needs to be gone. So this can be a good opportunity to check some of these that should be off the account and kind of got through. So yeah, okay. So you can see I'm pretty diligent about managing my account. The artifacts and not a whole lot slips through. I try to stick around that eight to 900 range where I've got enough to, uh, and, and keep my inbox empty. So I've got enough to kind of grind dungeons overnight and then and then get rid of things and then if i get up closer to 950 or something it's time to go through and cut a bunch of stuff so it's just kind of a slow threshold where it keeps getting tougher and tougher and your gear kind of slowly gets better and better and one last synergy i wanted to touch on really quick uh before i forget is uh defense and attack do not synergize as stats so if like if you've got a defense champion like Scylla the drakes or something that you're building attack is going to be worthless on her it does not help her toughness. It does not help her damage. It's a worthless stat. So if you've got a defensive type set that's going to be used on somebody like a Sill of the Drakes, maybe you've got defense set or whatever, uh, having attack on that set is a huge problem. It's going to be an artifact that you really don't want. It's just a blatantly wasted roll. You're better off having flat HP or something and at least getting some value. So be careful about defense and attack. And then also on attack champions, typically they want hp over defense in terms of what they prioritize because of the way ai works in the game it's going to target something with less hp so if you can stack hp on some of your attack champions the enemies will go after some of those high defense low hp uh, opponents instead of targeting like your cold hearts so really, really often you'll see champions like a cold heart uh be in an hp percent chest just to try to get some of that damage up and, and and avoid her being targeted by some of those waves on auto and stuff so uh definitely pay attention to the attack and defense stat they don't synergize very well you're gonna have to be kind of careful uh in keeping artifacts that have defense and attack i'd be really picky on those but okay, this video has already gotten up towards that 20 minute mark. I don't want a 45 minute video about this. Uh, so I'm not going to dive into jewelry in this video. Maybe I'll do a second one uh, and, and we'll dive into the discussion about jewelry. That's kind of a, an entirely different beast. Uh, different roles, different parameters, 
and, uh, and and lots of different exceptions when it comes to jewelry. But I'm gonna wrap it up there. Uh, this, this was a commonly requested video when I'm live on stream. Is walking through the uh, I'm knocking stuff over. Is walking through the process of uh, of what's going through my mind because when I'm doing it live, I'm trying to get through it as fast as possible because it's not the most exciting content for people to watch uh, in terms of doing gear cleanses. But I have like things people can redeem for channel points where I'll go through their account and, and cleanse their artifacts for them. But I try to do it super fast and uh, and kind of get to the uh, and get to, and get back to the show. So I don't usually take like 30 minutes every time to explain what I'm doing. So it's a common request to throw a video out there like this. So it'll be nice to have this where I can set up a command to link to it. And that's why I wanted to get this video out there. But yeah, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I will do my best to try and answer them for you and get to uh, get to what I see. So that'll do it for this one. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.